Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Joel, and this is A Stable Life with the Veggie Boys. I got the lights off in the barn today. Today is Gavin's day to be feeding horses and taking care of all of them. Wanted to show you guys the horses just before we got started over on the other side of the farm, where we will be all day. Oh, look at all these beauties. Looking good, guys. Yeah, looking good. That's what I love to see. We'll check in with Gavin from time to time throughout the day, but today is hay. <clears throat> Yesterday I spent a better half of my day cleaning up the hay farm property as well as tedding hay. We have more hay laid, as you guys saw. So we're gonna really kind of hone in and see just how many bales we're gonna get from today to add to our stockpile. Never can have enough round bales. That's what I'm learning. Back. Well, there you go. You just saw what we pretty much spent our entire morning doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this tractor and get that big tank started filling up with water because they're planting some vegetables this afternoon. And then uh, I'm going to take my tractor and hook up to the windrower and get over to that hay, see how that hay looks. You really get an idea how many bales you're going to get once you start making windrows. So I'm hoping we get a, a good amount of hay. Oh, nice air when you got the windows open. Park this in the shade so it stays nice and cool. Don't think I talked at all about the weather, but temperature today, right now, is about 83, and the humidity is in the high 90s. I think they're saying it's like 94% right now. You know, it's pretty great. Let's get this tank filled up. Okay, that's filling up with water. All we got to do now is just make sure the water lines are off. That one's off, and that one's off. Perfect. So no water will be leaking. That's all set. Daniel's got the round baler hooked up. Hey Daniel, I got a question for you. Huh. How long could you round bale before you need to stop to take a break? The round baler, I normally go, I like to make about 25 bales and I get out and check my round baler. Last time I was round baling, I got a rock stuck the two belts, flaring one belt a little. So it's good to get out and check every once in a while. This is all ready and he has no windrows. So I'm gonna go hook up to the windrower. Looks like he's hooking up the computer and the electrics for the round baler. So what does that computer control? Uh, my bale density, bale size, we can net wrap and also string wrap with this round bale. So I can switch between back and forth. I also noticed that you usually run the 110 on the round baler. Is there a reason for that? Uh, 100 is too small and the 130 we normally use to load or to move the round bales. So this tractor is the one that normally runs the baler. I have round bales with the 130 though before. Any differences? No, there's no difference. Perfect, Daniel. Thank you so much. Gavin is over on the hill, actually working on cutting down thistle trees and brush. So I'm curious how he's doing. We'll have to talk with him over lunch. Right now, my tractor is hooked up to the tether because that's what I was using last. So we're going to go unhook the tether and hook up to the rake. I can see the quad and the big wagon is gone too. So I'm curious to see how things look. He was pretty excited. I don't know, just something nice about knowing that you're able to go out and get rid of something that's nasty and replace it with something that's nice. <laughs> Right, there we go. Now we've got the rotary rake hooked up. Looks like I'm gonna need to put a little air in that tire before I go. Other than that, the rake looks ready to roll. The baler's ready to roll. Now I just need to get ready to roll and I'm starving. So let's head on in, see what we got for lunch. And let's load up on some water too, cause it's warm. Gotta make sure we stay hydrated. How's your lunch, Daniel? Uh, good. And for lunch, I'm getting an extra special treat. Uh, my wife was uh, at Chick-fil-A, so I got a Chick-fil-A sandwich for today, which is pretty exciting. There's a storm that is just popping up on the other side of the mountain over there and moving through, uh, which is a little scary because we're trying to get all our hay baled today. I better get started, and for me to get going, I'm gonna need to fill this tire up with air. Let's put some air in it. Here we go. Let me tell you guys, this air hose reel is just mint. Make sure it's got enough, because we're going down the road a little bit. There we go. That'll do it. All right, so here's the opening to one of the fields that goes back into the woods a ways. Let's see how this feels here. Yes, good. Dry as a bone. What about over here? Oh, <laughs> Perfect guys, perfect. That is very good. That is what I wanted to see. Uh, this is in the woods. So if this is dry, the hill is definitely dry. So let's head on over to the hill, get started rotary raking. Oh, that's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Hey, did you hit that like button? Here 
here's our hay field. Let's see how things look. I'm pretty confident that we should be okay. Those storm clouds got me a little unsettled. Ah, dry, dry, dry. Even the stuff that was, was wet is dry. Good. Awesome. Well, let's get raking, guys. wanted to update you guys on quickly here before the round baler gets here and it gets really crazy. So as I'm raking, this is the drier side of the hill. So you can see there's no disturbances, all the wind rows are up, but you also notice if you look further up top there, you see that they're thicker. And as you come this way, you can see that it gets small to the point that this is this, is this whole section here. And that's how much that we got. You know, conversely, you've got other areas there. So this area is more rocky, which also means it's dry, which is why you're not seeing uh, any wet spots. But there are areas in this field that are very high in clay, which means that there's areas where water is sitting instead of draining. And in those areas, what I'm doing is I'm taking the rake up to, and then I just use the hydraulics to pick the rake up. We drive right over top of it. It has been tedded. So it's all spread out over the ground. It'll degrade into the ground nice and easy. But if you take that wet hay and put that in the bale, uh, what you're gonna start doing is that bale will start generating heat and start fermenting. You can wrap it, which is fine. It will preserve it. It will keep it from going bad. And you don't really want fermenting hay for horses. Fermenting hay uh, can create gas in their system and you don't want to create gas in their system. So that's why we make sure that the hay is dry. That's why we use all this equipment to condition the hay. That's why we're constantly watching the weather. I just thought that'd be something that a lot of you guys would find would be interesting. I'm gonna uh, put the camera on and show you will be those areas where you can see that it's wet, where we're just letting that biodegrade back into the ground instead of baling it and taking it home. We're probably losing out, my guess would be about six to seven round bales. It's far better to leave it in the field than to get those extra six or seven round bales and then potentially have a problem with the horses. We don't want to even chance having a problem with the horses. So that's why we're being as cautious as we are. I am oh so happy to see that. The round baler is hard at work picking up the hay. He, Daniel just got here and he was getting everything fine-tuned. Away he goes. I'm not gonna lie, these windrows are pretty big. When I was here looking at this earlier, uh, when it was disc fined, I didn't think there was too much here. But after raking it, there's a lot here. So he's gonna be coming up right here. So we'll get a quick shot of him baling. And then I got one more field I need to rake. And then I'm gonna get looped into the group that's picking up the bales and let's get them wrapped before this rain gets here. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was going to make a full bail before he hit this turn. 
I love Daniel round bailing because he is really good at trying to get those bales from rolling down too far. He's good at positioning them where they need to be. As you guys know, Daniel's very good at his job. So it's always good to have him running the round baler. Looks like I made that turn a little too sharp for the round baler. He'll come back and get that though. That's how he is. Awesome. Next time you guys see this field, we'll be working on picking up all the bales that are in it. Let's get to the next field. saw there was logistics we were getting the skid steer loader to the wrap oh let's, let me put the camera on me uh, how about that uh, skid steer loader down there to the wrap site and now I am in the 130 and we're gonna hook up to the bale spear and the bale wagon and then we're gonna head out and start loading up round bales they should be by in the field with the truck soon Daniel's just about done round bailing already which is awesome because then Daniel can run down to the wrap site and run the skid steer loader. Brian can wrap, I can load, and Matt can haul the bales back and forth. Well, there's round bales everywhere. That's nice to see. Just how many? I don't know yet. It's looking like we're in the uh, mid 30s is gonna be my guess. There we go, first full load. That's 12 round bales heading out of the field. So now we're gonna head under the lower section grab all these what we got down here five and I'll bring these five up and then we'll go to the other side of the field and bring them over to there twice the work and half the time. It's pretty nice. Okay, the second load is away. That's exciting. And that is it for this field. So I think we should only have one more load and then uh, that'll be it. If that's the case, then we're looking at 36 round bales, but uh, won't know until we go to the last field there and we see what we have in there. That'll tell us everything that we have. Okay, so it looks like we have six round bales in here. <laughs> Ain't that something? Looks a lot better when it's all bailed up, doesn't it? Man, it looks good. It is so surreal driving around inside of woods with two round bales in a giant tractor. <laughs> it really does definitely feel very interesting. It's like, what on earth? This is crazy. <laughs> All right, so we've got four over here. There are 10 round bales left. So that means that we got 34 round bales. Were you right? I'm curious. 34 plus 55, that's 89 round bales so far. And uh, we still have about one more field back here. Um, technically we have two, but I was walking around in it yesterday and there is water laying in the field practically everywhere. There is a part of the field that we might be able to get. It all depends on whether or not it actually dries down right now. We're, we're getting rain every other day with a window opening in between where you get like two and a half days of no rain, which is so weird considering we needed the rain so badly in the spring. And uh, now we're in the opposite situation. We're just asking for balance. That's really all we're asking for. <laughs> Oh man, but that's exciting, that's exciting. Especially when you consider that we got 120 for the entire season last year and we got 89 so far off of just one farm. That's, that's tremendously amazing. 
Just got these four left in here and then we're pretty much ready for Brian. This is the last load right here. We got 10, eight on the wagon, two on the truck. And I'll be following the truck back home. Not bad, not bad. Do you mind holding this for a second? Sure. Hey, looks pretty good too. You guys seeing this? Yeah. Good stuff. That's what we like to see. That's a pretty sweet shot too. I just felt like that needed to be seen. <laughs> Next stop, let's see how, let's go to the wrapping site and see how things look. Look at all these wrapped bales, man. Oh, I've never seen it from this side. Daniel's being a smooth operator. Oh, you guys see all of this. Just look at this. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a view. Everybody's all working together to get the hay in for the horses. We all used to work together and we'd literally be working hard all in all these small square bales. But now we get to sit in tractors and most of them are air conditioned. So we've got the truck, the skid steer, the 100. I was just in the 130. This whole change happened actually live on the videos. Thanks, Matt. We'll see ya. I don't mean live like I streamed it. I mean like if you guys go back in the channel's history, you can see when we were just using square bales. And then when we decided to switch over to round bales, how nervous we were about doing so. Then the test that ensued to test out if the round bales would work, followed by the fact that it was a success, followed by the change for feeding the horses, followed by the success for the horse. You know, you can literally just see everything taking place in time. It's, it's really cool to look back and see that all that's documented, you know? It's a neat feeling. And that's a cool shot right there. You guys see all that? And that's not everything. I don't know if it's true or not, but I was told that tomorrow we're mowing more hay. There's a huge storm coming through tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you. Daniel thinks about the little things and I always appreciate it. Yeah, so I don't know if it's still happening, but I believe we might be mowing hay tomorrow. Are we still mowing hay tomorrow? No idea, yeah, we have no idea. So if that does happen, then you guys will be seeing what happens in the next video regardless. That's why you should make sure that you're subscribed. Keeps you up to date on all future videos, content, bales of hay, all these things are all coming up, all going on. It's crazy, it's crazy around here. A lot of you that have subscribed for just the horse content are a little tired of seeing all the farming content. I can understand that. The reason why the channel is called A Stable Life is because it's my life as a horse stable manager. So you guys are just following along with me as we take care of the horses, the horse stable, and everything that's required to also help and make sure that that horse stable runs as a smooth operation. All of this is possible because we're a family farm. None of these guys would be helping me do this at all. Basically walk around and record them talking to a camera while they're working. None of this would happen if we weren't a family farm. So that's why I work with them to make sure that they're able to get what they need done. And they work with me to make sure that we're able to get what we need done. So as always, I hope you guys enjoy all the content, both farming and horse stable. And just keep in mind that there's more horse stable content coming in the fall and winter when I have more time to really slow down and talk about horse care and all the neat little tips and tricks that come with taking care of a horse. As for the summertime, that's when we're working on projects. That's when we're making hay. That's when we're trying to get everything done before winter. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like button. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Anybody else want a nice glass of hot chocolate after seeing all these marshmallows?